and welcome to day 11 of the second annual 12 Days of Sin Mess. Oh, that made me sad to say. My gift to you for the second to last day of Sin Mess is... Actually... Can you get it? And would you mind wrapping it too? Babe, you know I don't know how to wrap again. What you just heard is an example of weaponized incompetence, otherwise known as acting clueless to avoid unwanted responsibilities. This term originated from a 2007 article describing employees trying to get out of doing tasks at work. And honestly, who can blame them? None of us dream of labor. But in recent years, especially on social media, weaponized incompetence has become more associated with husbands who don't contribute to household chores or childcare and leave it all for their wives. This stems from the belief that domestic labor is the woman's job in a relationship. So the men who knowingly or unknowingly practice weaponized incompetence will play dumb so they don't have to help out around the house. This can also lead to some wives feeling like married single mothers because their husband turns into an additional child they have to take care of alone. Sounds like a nightmare, right? Well, today we're going to watch a few examples of husbands on TikTok weaponizing their incompetence with some of their wives even going along with the joke. And to that I say, bestie, stand up. It, it doesn't have to be like this. We're all rooting for you. Which reminds me, I do have an ad read before we start. Oh well, I'll let someone in a different shirt do it. Have you ever signed up for a streaming service to watch one show and then vow to end your subscription before the next billing period, only to totally forget to cancel it for two years? <laughs> Me neither. But if that sounds like you, then Rocket Money is here to help. Rocket Money is the personal finance app that helps you save more and spend less. It allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, create a budget, and grow your savings all in one place. If I did have any unwanted subscriptions, which I don't because I'm very on top of it, Rocket Money safely and securely identifies recurring charges and cancels any unwanted subscriptions for you, and it's only a couple taps away inside their free to download app. Rocket Money has helped millions of customers save an average of $720 per year. I've also been using Rocket Money to track my spending and create a budget, which has been extra important lately since student loan payments have started back up. Take control of your finances today by going to rocketmoney.com slash Anna Marie Forcino to get started for free. You can even unlock more features with premium. Again, that's rocketmoney.com slash Anna Marie Forcino. Thank you to Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video and helping me and my sinners save more and spend less this sin miss season. Now let's get back to your scheduled programming. Uh, is this gonna be yet another video of me yelling about TikToks? Yeah. And are you gonna watch? Hopefully. Love you. All right, let's take some talks. So the caption for this first video is, one year ago, my husband assured me it would be fine if we took our kids out to eat. I haven't spoken to him since. Now, I'm not going to play the music in the video because I'm pretty sure it's copyrighted. So basically, this woman, this super mom is trying to feed all three of her toddlers at the same time. And her husband's doing absolutely nothing, sitting there eating peacefully like he's the one being inconvenienced because his children are making a fuss. If I had to guess, her oldest child is like five or six at most. And the other two are definitely toddlers. And wrangling in one young child sounds hard enough already. But imagine trying to feed three young children along with feeding yourself. And then your husband is sitting here giving us absolutely nothing. Sir, you should be ashamed of yourself. I love how he has the nerve to look annoyed. Like his meal is ruined. Well, you know what? I'm sure your wife would love to eat her meal. But instead, she's got to handle all three of your rugrats while you just sit there like a useless turd. If this is what we have to look forward in motherhood, then you know what? I'm surprised that any of us still have kids. Because genuinely, who wants to tolerate this? Not that the kids aren't great. I'm sure they're lovely young girls. But if this is just a glimpse into their relationship as parents and significant others, then I would hate to see the rest of the picture. Let's read some of the comments, though. I hope they I hope they really stuck it to him. Oh, this comment right here. He's probably so tired when he gets home, too. From what, doing absolutely nothing? For giving 0% effort? Please. I truly hope that this is just like fake 
content to get engagement because otherwise this is just really sad. So this next one I have is a skit. We will be the ones to decide if it's really funny or if it's just a bad way to cope. I'm throwing out the garbage. I'm washing the dishes. I'm loading the dishwasher. I'm unloading the dishwasher. I'm going food shopping. I'm back from food shopping. I'm unloading the groceries. I'm doing the laundry. I'm folding the laundry. I'm putting your clothes away. I picked up your prescription. I'm cleaning where you missed. I'm filling out your mother's birthday card. I'm covering the furniture. The joke's a little old now. Why are we yelling? I'm really uncomfortable with your tone of voice right now. It's like, congrats, sir. You did one chore. Do you want a medal? Like, I know this is a joke, but in a lot of jokes lies some truth. And why do I feel like this is something that actually happens in their household? I'm really gonna try not to make assumptions about the people in the video today. I truly have nothing against anyone, even the husbands, I guess. But jokes are rooted in something. So does your husband just watch you do the 72? two other chores in your house and then he has to alert the fucking press when he takes out the garbage one time this is hell you're a victim it doesn't have to be like this anyway <laughs> my husband did one load of dishes it was like six cat plates three children's plates and like four mugs and cleaned the sink but he left me all of this and i said what the hell that's not helping me <clears throat> so what did he do he came and he put the dishes away <laughs> that's it Am I wrong to be upset? That is a lot of f***ing dishes, dude. But like, I guess if you're, you have like a whole family and young kids, like that's to be expected. So he like cleaned up 30% of the dishes and put them away, but then he left you with the other 70%. And then like, she literally tells him that what he did wasn't helping because she still has 70% of the dishes to do. And then he just like completely ignores her and finishes the 30% he did, as opposed to helping her with the other 70%. And it's like, no. That's not how that works. And that's the thing with weaponized incompetence. Like the other person plays dumb to a point where it's just easier for you to do it. And then that just adds more workload to your plate that you have to wash now because your husband's not doing it. Mm -mm. And people were calling her disrespectful in the comments and saying she's not ready for marriage. How did you get that conclusion from this video? <sighs> I'm going to calm down. We're going to move on. Oh, no, I didn't mean to like it. Oh, shit. So the next video actually went very viral recently and it was all over some canned pumpkin. I'm very curious to hear what you guys have to say about it because I have a lot of thoughts. All right, Nathan Timmel, what do you have to say for yourself? Single guys, here's what it's like being married. My wife sent me to the store to buy the ingredients for pumpkin bars. I'm walking the aisles and realize canned pumpkin, not on the list. Is this a mistake? Do we already have it? Let's call the wife to find out. She sends me straight to voicemail, shoots a text, can't talk. I respond with my dilemma and continue shopping. 10 minutes later, I'm ready to go. Still don't have a response. Call her again. Straight to voicemail, can't talk. Text her again, need an answer. Wait five minutes, leave. Now, could I have bought canned pumpkin? Yes, but if we already have it, it's going to sit on the shelf for a year. You only use it at Thanksgiving. Halfway home, I get a text, we need canned pumpkin. I tell her I'm gone. She asks, can you go back? No, I called you twice. That was with purpose. You think I'm calling to chit chat? Hey, haven't talked to you since breakfast. What's up? Shut up. <laughs> I was with him on the first part, like canned pumpkin wasn't on the ingredient list. So you assume that you have it, but then it's like, you know, pumpkin's like the star of the show. So like, what if you don't have it? And it's kind of like assumed that you buy it. So like, I get the frustration there, but then his wife calls him on the way home and clarifies that like, yeah, we actually do need pumpkin. And then he just refuses to go back to the store. Like you're in the car. You might as well just go back. Let's just say you still had a can at home. What's the harm in just like picking it up just in case? Canned goods last for a very long time. That's why like food banks ask for them because they're non-perishable foods. So like even if you did buy an extra one that you didn't need this year, you could probably hold out until next year for when she makes pumpkin bars again. Then next year you would be all set and you wouldn't need to buy the pumpkin because you would have already bought it the year before. You should be grateful that you have a wife that likes to make baked goods. That's awesome. Apparently this guy's a comedian, but all he did was paint himself out to be a 
total bag. What is it with like guys in comedy using women as the butt of their jokes? <coughs> Matt Reif. Oh my God. And he posted a novel of a caption too. Let's read it. Anyway, marriage, the blessed union of two souls who fall truly, deeply, madly in love. And then 10 years later, if they're lucky, you're very lucky, sir. Can't stand the sound of one another chewing. We think, why am I stuck with this person when there are endless possibilities out there waiting for me? Then we remember, oh right, no one else is even remotely interested in me. Ha, huh. I kid, because I love my wife. But seriously, she calls people just to chit chat. Does it all the time, in fact. When I call, it's with purpose. I have a reason I picked up my phone and tapped away at those digits. I need information. Hence the kerfuffle right before Thanksgiving. If you're using kerfuffle, you're an asshole. Sorry, was that too harsh? Or am I just spitting facts? Admittedly, in reality, this was a big nothing. Then why'd you make a video? Why did you beg for likes and attention on your little TikTok page if it was a big load of nothing? Hmm? But I need daily content and if I can exaggerate things a little to make them hopefully slightly amusing, so be it. No, you just made yourself look dumb. Like, um, my wife is making pumpkin bars. I don't think she needs the pumpkin that bad. Please. I told the story on stage this past weekend. Got big laughs on Friday and middling laughs on Saturday. Zero laughs on the Anna Marie Forcino YouTube channel. It's a little better live because I'm not constrained to one minute, so hopefully I'll have a decent recording of it someday. We can only hope. <laughs> but to all the straight women or just any woman who likes and dates and is attracted to men, find you a man that'll get you canned pumpkin for your pumpkin bars without you having to ask. I truly wish that for all of you, really. Ooh, this one's from a podcast. You know it's gonna be so insightful and good and also awesome. One thing in the world that I couldn't do, because I could do anything, I couldn't be a mom. No, no, no. none of us can. Are no. You you? You, that is one of the hardest jobs in the world. And I'm very lucky that I don't have to wake up at night to do anything if, She's home. I'm not changing poopy diapers. So you're glad that you don't have to be a present and active parent. Because that's what moms do. Dads just sit there and watch football on the couch and play Candy Crush on their phone. And complain on podcasts. Unless, like, I'm in a really good mood. Or there's two at the same time. If there's two poopy diapers at the same time, I will do the male. Even the woman he's talking to is horrified. I will do the male poopy diaper. Right. Because I, I know the plumbing better. Jenna, can Why do you have to make it so weird? It's a baby. That is your child. They have one half of your DNA. Why are you making it weird? Like your daughter's still shitting herself. How are you already being misogynistic toward her? I love how he says he helps out if he's in a good mood. So you're only a parent when you're in a good mood. Do you think your wife is in a good mood the whole time? Do you think parents have to be in a good mood to be a parent? No. Being a parent sucks, at least as far as I can imagine. The most parenting I do is nothing, really. When you sign up to be a parent, you sign up for the good and the bad, no matter what mood you're in, no matter how you're feeling. And you're fully self-reporting on your stupid little podcast that you're not a present parent. You kind of suck, actually. By this or what? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm... And he'll let me know when they went to the bathroom, though. Like, That's oh. his wife? How do you feel no shame? Respectfully. Oh, man, he stinks. So I'm, like, waiting. Maybe Zach will change him. He's like, oh, he really stinks. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Hey, this diaper is disgusting. You might want to get to this one sooner than later. Jeez. Dude, I'm the worst. Well, that's the one true and correct thing he said this entire video. You are, in fact... The worst. So the caption for this next one is, when I asked the hubs to watch baby redacted names so I could shower. Mommy's coming. She's coming to save you. And she has boobs. What happened? Ew. Oh my God. What happened? He's a titty baby. How are you not disappointed in yourself? It's like, again, another case of like a... Like the husband thinking he's doing a favor by watching his own kid. That is half of you. It took two to tango. You were part of that tango. No, you're not doing her a favor. You're doing your job as a father. Your wife can't even step away for 15 minutes to shower and take care of herself. And you already want to give the baby back. <sighs> right, this one. When dad is on baby duty. All right. So it looks like a little munchkin is trying to climb the stairs. This guy's going crazy stupid. Also climbing up the stairs. The dad is still not moving. Oh, baby is climbing the stairs and he's not doing shit. He's checking his email. Yeah, that's really safe. That's really good looking at dad. No, it's not like your kid could fall. 
crack his head open. Stairs are famously baby proof after all. Babies' heads, they're, they're fragile little things. You need to take care of them. You need to watch out for them. He doesn't know. He's just a little guy. Be there as a parent. You are not pulling your weight, sir. Anyway. Can you believe she had a baby seven days ago? Oh my God, you look great. Can you believe I had a baby seven days ago and I'm the one that's doing the laundry? You look like shit. I take it back. <laughs> So when she calls him out for the truth that she just had a baby a week ago and she's the one doing the chores, he has to take her down. It must have hit him where it hurts if he had to go to that level. Like this woman just birthed your child. How do you not feel like you owe her your life right now? But you know what? She does look great even a week after giving birth. And you know what? Even if you don't look like her and you just gave birth, you still look great. You're still awesome. You're a superhero. This mom's a superhero. All right. So this next video I'm about to show you has almost 6 million views and went viral, I believe, sometime earlier this year, so you've probably seen it by now. It definitely caused quite a bit of a stir. The husband featured in this definitely became public enemy number one for a bit. So I can't play the music in this one either, but picture Mother by Megan Trainer playing in the background. My husband didn't eat the dinner that I made. Is your husband five years old? If I don't feed him, he literally won't eat. So starve. That's not your problem, ma'am. If he wants to eat, he can make his stupid little nachos himself. Considering that nachos literally take like five minutes at most to prepare please this used to irritate me oh that's stockholm syndrome How, why are you blaming the mom for him not liking the salmon that you made that was his responsibility to broaden his palate what's stopping him from going tonight's the night i'm gonna try salmon this isn't me trying to make a dig at picky eaters i'm a picky eater myself so like i get it but like that's on me you know, you can't blame my parents for that. That's on me for not being adventurous enough with my food. And that is on him for not appreciating his beautiful wife's cooking. Mama Brianna, you're a queen. Also, if you see, if you keep seeing this burn in my videos, you've probably seen it for the past few days. I burned myself when I was making eggs for me and my girlfriend that we both ate. Thank you very much. But don't worry, I'm being very brave about it. Anyway, I could tell she's really trying to cope with the fact that her husband's a picky man child that can't even make his own stupid nachos. That's him? I'm sorry, but a man who will refuse to eat when his wife doesn't make what he wants for dinner doesn't deserve to be that comfortable. All he's missing is his little iPad playing Coca Melon on the screen. Then he would be all set with his little nachos and his little blanket on his little couch like the little boy he is. Ma'am, you have an extra child in your house. That's not your husband. That is your son. And he should be ashamed of himself. All right, so this very last video also went viral. So I can't play the music because, again, copyright it so i'll explain what's happening so the caption is when i have to send my husband to the store and she's making a grocery list which normal fair enough everyone does that but she made like visuals of everything they need like instead of just writing DiGiorno pizza she put a picture of the little DiGiorno pizza right here same with the cereal the avocado as if a grown man doesn't know what an avocado looks like and he needs like a visual for it the laundry, the yogurt, the aisle, the price. It's like that, again, that's the thing with weaponized incompetence. It's like you're doing all this work, like making the map and the list will probably take longer than you just going to the grocery store yourself. And that's probably the goal for the husband you're sending to the store. Literally anything but this. This is my personal hell. And like I've read somewhere that like visual lists can help like people with ADHD. You're not who I'm talking about. You're doing great, sweetie. I'm talking about the man whose wife needs to glue on a little picture of an avocado so he knows which avocado to get. Pain in the ass. I would just go myself. <sighs> but uh, I'm gonna get off my soapbox today and lay down because I feel like I did a lot of yelling in this video. This is the second day in a row where I'm getting pissed off and borderline yelling at my computer screen. So I think I'm gonna end the video there. If you'd like to see me talk about weaponized incompetence or anything in particular going forward, I have a Google form linked in the description where you could submit your video ideas. But thank you so much for being here for the second to last day of the second annual 12 Days of Sin Miss. <sighs> 
lord if you like this video make sure to give it a tiny tiny thumbs up and subscribe down below oh my god i can't believe i'm saying this but i will see you tomorrow for the very last day of the 12 days of sinmas and i'm gonna be with a friend too so get excited i love you guys bye